As with any piece of technology, JavaScript has a lot of jargon involved. Now, we're not going to be able to cover nearly all of the jargon that you would need to become an expert in JavaScript in this course, but I do want to give you an overview of a lot of the basics that you'll need to make some sense of what's happening. As we progress through the course, we'll be diving deeper into a lot of these concepts, but I'm just going to introduce them here so that you're familiar with the names and have a sense of what they do. We'll start off with data types. JavaScript is aware of a lot of different data types. You have numbers, which everybody knows what a number is. You have strings, which are a sequence of words or characters. You have Booleans, which just mean that something is either true or false. And you also have collections of data types. These are called arrays, and they order lists of things. An object, which are sometimes called dictionaries in other languages, are basically a collection of things where each thing in the object has a name and then a value. So it's just a group of names and values. JavaScript really likes objects. There are a lot of built-in objects, some of which are called window, which is the global object, and one that's available anywhere when you're working in JavaScript inside of a web browser. Document, which is available to you also if you're working on the web, as part of the document object model, and we're going to talk more about this later, and there are also many other objects. Objects themselves have properties, so basically any named something in an object is referred to as a property. JavaScript also has a notion of variables, and to use the metaphor of JavaScript as a spoken language, it's a computer language, but it is a language. You could think of variables as JavaScript's nouns. They're sort of like proper nouns. So take a something, be it a number or a sentence or whatever, and you give it a name, and that name is a variable. You can also think of variables as containers that store information. There are also operators, which if we're keeping in the metaphor of JavaScript as a spoken language, Operators are like verbs. These are how you take things and do things to them. JavaScript has a whole bunch of these, and they have all kinds of funky symbols. So plus is used for addition, but it's also used to combine strings. The equal sign, a single equal sign anyways, is used to assign variables. That is, to give a collection of data a name. And then you have double equal signs, which are used to test whether something is just like something else and an exclamation point followed by an equal sign is to check if something is not equal to something else and then there's a whole bunch of other ones that we'll be discussing. JavaScript also has functions. Functions, if we're stretching the linguistic metaphor, could be thought of as paragraphs. So functions are collections of other statements that can do something with some data. As it happens in JavaScript, they're also a data type of their own right. So for now, just know that it's a thing. Inside an object, you can have properties, which are functions. When that happens, it's referred to as a method. We're going to see lots of methods in this course. So when you hear me say method, just know that I'm talking about a function. It's something that does something. When we're talking about functions, there's also a notion of arguments. That's not to say that functions are fighting with each other. This is just what it's called when you want to pass data into a function for processing, after which it's often returned. So it's sort of like the in and out box of a function. You could think of a function as a factory. Those elements that we're passing in for processing are called arguments. Next, we have control structures. This is how we do logical operations. That is to say, if we want to do something in some cases, but maybe not in others, or if we want to do something in a certain number of times, anything like that is called a control structure. So for logical ones, you'll see a lot of these if and else statements. And then there's something called a switch, which is another way of writing a whole bunch of statements so you don't have to just write a bunch of if statements. There's also a notion of loops, and there are a couple main types that you'll use in JavaScript. One is the for loop, which you'll see a lot of, and in addition to that we have the while loop. I'm not going to explain what these are at the moment, but just know that these are both ways to do something over and over again until such a time as you need it to stop. 
So let's look at some of the jargon more specifically that we're going to be using in this course.